We've all learned a little bit about nutrition, from the four food groups, to the food pyramid, to the recommended amounts of meat, dairy, grains, and vegetables the RDA, or Recommended Daily Allowance, tells us our bodies need to function. But with so many fad diets, from Atkins to South Beach and even Paleo, and the so-called health experts advocating for the supremacy of animal protein, single vitamin nutrition, and superfood powerhouses, it can be overwhelming to decide what information we can truly rely upon, and which information is just marketing hype. Since most medical doctors get less than five hours of nutrition education, we decided to separate fact from fiction and find out for ourselves what the science says. That's when we discovered the T. Colin Campbell Center for Nutrition Studies in Ithaca, New York. In concert with Cornell University and the eCornell online learning system, Dr. Campbell has created a six-week intensive course on plant-based nutrition. We need to have a course on uh, the government's role in spreading or not spreading this message. Oh, Michelle Simon. Oh, Michelle, yeah, she, 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 Michelle who? Michelle Simon. Michelle Simon. Michelle Simon. Michelle Simon. Yeah. Michelle Simon that's right. As a Ph.D. professor emeritus of nutrition at Cornell and the author of New York Times bestsellers, The China Study, and Whole, Dr. Campbell is arguably the top expert in the world on nutrition. Over the course of his illustrious career, he spent over 50 years researching the impact of diet on health and disease, including 27 years of research funded by the National Institutes of Health. The fundamental assumption of the way we practice medicine is flat out wrong. What we're doing is we're using medicines, foreign compounds, most of the times toxic, we're using foreign compounds to try to reduce the symptoms of the disease. That's what we're doing. We're not treating at all the cause because doctors aren't trained in nutrition. They can't even begin to think this way. And um, what they are trained in is reductionist medicine. So the professionals, whether the researchers like myself or whether it's clinical practitioners, are not getting the information right. And that's been the way it has been for half a century, more than that with learning modules covering topics like the standard American diet, the dangers of too much animal protein, and how to identify unsubstantiated nutritional claims, and lectures from the top medical doctors and researchers in the world. This course clarifies the link between diet and chronic diseases like diabetes, hypertension, heart disease, osteoporosis, and even cancer. We reverse cancer with non-mutation events. You know, the animals are exposed to a carcinogen that starts the formation of liver cancer, causes a mutation, right? And according to traditional theory, you should have a series of mutations that will keep on progressing. We actually found that uh, that will go forward only if these animals had protein in excess of what they needed to have. I mean, protein is an essential nutrient. And so the protein that was fed in excess was casein, the main protein of cow's milk. So it makes the, makes the journey go forward for these cow's cancers. Milk, cow's milk. Cow's milk protein. The, pro the, the cancer is uh, going forward, progressing. We dropped the level from, and that was 20% of total calories, which is not real high, but it's high enough. We dropped it down to 5%. We turned the cancer off. We turn around and give the 20% protein back again. We turn it on. We give them the low protein, turn it off. We could, get, we could turn it on and turn off the cancer. Nutrition is not a function of individual nutrients. You know, when we in research do research on just one nutrient or one mechanism or that sort of thing, we're only looking at a part of the whole. So it was possible then to begin to explain uh, why we have so much confusion and why, in fact, nutrition is not taught in medical schools. Because the entire practice of medicine is a, a reductionist strategy. One pill at a time, working on one disease, 
all premised on the assumption that we're somehow we've identified a specific mechanism for that drug to work or nutrient. And uh, it's wrong. It's simply flat out wrong. It's created enormous amounts of confusion when protein was first discovered. You know, and we thought protein was the elixir of life. It was, it was the stuff of civilization itself, <laughs> all this crazy stuff. And then we got on to thinking that animal protein, mo most people in the beginning thought protein meant the same thing as meat. When it's not, didn't realize that plants had protein too. But so the idea that protein is animal-based, that was a big error. All of a sudden then you become aware of how we distorted our understanding of nutrition. But we kept on thinking this way as a society that we need more protein, we need more protein. And that usually meant meat, milk, and eggs. And when, when we do that, we think that way, and we think about how much protein we're consuming, and think about it in this whole more holistic sense, what does that do to all the other stuff we're eating? All of a sudden, then some new lights come on. And you realize that plants, you know, whole food, plant-based diet, has all the protein we need. We don't need any extra protein. That can be demonstrated very clearly. The holistic effect is so powerful. And when we distort the diet that much, and then that begins to create illness and disease. The long-term evidence for this is obviously very good. We already know that from science. Short-term, um, they can see it in a week, two weeks, amazing changes. And also in the process when they do that, then their tastes begin to change and everything. And they get to a point, they really do get to a point where they don't want the other stuff. They, this is a lifestyle, you have to stay with it. Can't, can't do it this two weeks or this three weeks or something like that, like you do with a drug regimen. And then go back to doing what you did wrong. People all the time, they say, oh, I tried that. You know, you say, I don't want to hear you say, you tried it. That's not the way the mind works. Don't, don't say you tried it. If you tried it, you know, it's a waste of time. You, you can't go say, oh, I tried it, because then you go back later and say, oh, I tried that, but it didn't work. It means you didn't care about it in the first place. So you don't try, you just do it. I like that concept. Dr. Campbell not only walks his talk, his personal commitment to following a whole foods, plant-based diet has kept him young and vital, well into his 80s. I'm 82 and I still run. And I feel really in great health. And I don't, don't can't take any pills, just an occasional B12 supplement. And I just feel great.